I don't get it. Like, I, I just something doesn't add up on my side. But you know what? It is what it is. So, <laughs> with that said, let's get into this. In the bottom right hand side, our red Protoss player to kick us off in our second best of three of Europe. It is Petit Drogo. And his opponent, one of Europe's greatest Terrans, it's Spirit. Yeah, Site Delta, though. This is uh, another map that we see in basically every series, right? I mean, this is probably... I don't know, you, you cast a ton of StarCraft. W would you say this is like the most common map you see in a new map pool? No, I think Alcyone gets played a little bit more, which is interesting because okay. I feel like that map's even bigger than this. I would say that this is a fairly sizable map. This map is kind of yep. interesting because of like a lot of the ledges. There's lots of like corners to put tanks around. So against Terrans, I feel like a lot of players don't love it. But then the size of it almost makes you want to play it anyway. So it's it's kind of got those perks on either side, which usually makes for a pretty good map, right? Like certain parts of it good yeah. for Terran, certain parts are better for Pros versus Zerg, and you know the matchup versus Terran, for example. So yeah, this one definitely gets played a fair amount, though. Uh, maybe not the absolute most, but it's it's making it into a lot of the best of threes. It's definitely not like I mean the most controversial maps. Radu said sometimes it's controversial. Equilibrium seems like the most guaranteed not playing that map because. Such an easy gold base and so on just makes it a bit uh, wonky. And even Hecata's yeah. kind of suffering from that as well. Yeah, I haven't seen all too much Equilibrium. No, you mention it. I mean, it's in my mind not nearly as crazy as Radu said Station, but like you're saying, we have been seeing it a lot over the last couple of weeks. When like the, the new patch first went like, I, I felt like we never would see uh, Radu said Station, or at the very least, you know, now with nine maps, everybody gets an extra veto. Even though the, maybe, maybe the process is a little different now, it's still a good chance that the maps aren't making it through, but yeah, we have been seeing that one a little bit more, so I'm secretly hoping we're going to see some of that later today too, but side Delta overall, pretty normal, right? Nothing all too spicy, nothing all too crazy. Certain parts are maybe a bit better for Terran, other parts are a bit better for Protoss overall. Yeah, I think this is one of those comfort maps. Comfort maps, yeah, no. I actually think this one, when I first saw it, I was like, because this was not in the TLMC finalists, so this one was kind of like mm -hmm. a out of nowhere map for me, and I was like, oh, I was like, I don't know if I, I love it, but then the more I've seen games on it, the more I think it's kind of pretty cool. The only thing I would say about this map is I feel like the top right and the bottom left bases never really seem to get taken. It feels like the game almost no. always gets decided going to like four or five base, which is interesting because I've seen some longer games on this and yet I just can't really recall these kind of upper bases really being like super influential. So it'd be cool if we get to see something longer, but this is Spirit and we expect him to play long, but again, if he's taking, <laughs> yeah. if he's taking on someone like Drogo, Maybe he can just end it sooner. That's one thing I think Spirit has improved on. He's been a bit more aggressive when he feels he can be lately. So, yeah, we'll see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Spirit is definitely the type of player who's not afraid to play the long games, but he feels a lot more comfortable ending it a bit earlier these days as well. If he does feel like he's ahead some time ago, he would basically just make another command center and then another command center yeah. and then another command center. And, you know, we're like, okay, I thought this game was over 20 minutes ago, but Spirit is still going strong. Uh, there's still a little bit of that left for sure, though, so maybe we are going to be seeing some of those corner bases as well that you were talking about. But for now, pretty normal openers. Widowmine opener right here from Spirit, an absolute Reddit favorite, and then also some Blink Stalker play on the other side of the map. Yeah, pretty just uh, straight down the path, right? Nothing really too wild. Let's we'll see if Drogo goes for any additional gateways or if he is just interested in taking his third very shortly. Uh, he really obviously just sets how much aggression he is going to bring to the table in this PVT opener. It's really going to be Spirit to start four Widow Mines, but also the two Heliots. So it's a little bit more aggressive because he's been mm -hmm. Reactor on units this entire time. So let's see what we can do as you are going to see the third from Drogo. Important right now is Spirit scouts that, that he just gets defensive because he doesn't want to let these two Hellions in, especially oh. not if he's also dealing with the Widow Mines at the same time. He's going to drop one of the Widow Mines out already, try to make sure that maybe he can get some damage done over in the natural, just walk it in. Stalker's now in the meantime, very busy inside of the main base. Widow Mines will get dropped, but nice cleanup so far of the Medivac. Now the Hellions in the natural are trying to put in a bunch of work, but so far, honestly, very well done right there by Drogo. Yep, he loses a couple Stalkers overall, right? So two Stalkers mm. in the depth and a probe. Really not so bad. One Widow Mines mine survives over in the corner. Drogo has remembered about it, so even though Spirit tries to hide Good. it, it will go down. Yeah, really just the perfect cleanup here from Drogo. That is a good amount of damage that he's been able to absorb and just... Yeah, this could have been so much worse, especially when the two Hellions get comboed in. It's so easy to lose control of your natural as well, but... Yeah, he was really on top of it, just had a good yeah. amount of units and did it all with a fast third Nexus. 
Yeah, exactly. It's not like he was just opening up two bays here, right? Because, yeah, cleaning it up on two bases is not quite the same as cleaning it up on three. You need to be in the right place at the right time with literally all your units. Because even that one Widow Mine just walking into the natural expansion is so annoying, right? Like, it requires additional target firing, but Drogo right there, uh, yeah quick on the keyboard now decides to go into the charge upgrade okay interesting what do you make of this are we going to be seeing a templar archives yeah i mean usually charge and then you play kind of gateway heavy for a while you could go into the robo and disruptors after this or so or maybe switch even into mm -hmm. glossy but templar archives archons obviously complement as well if you start building a lot of zealous your templar archives can provide the gas output of the templars and the hence archons so Definitely some possibilities. These few stalkers get two SCVs. We will lose one stalker, however, which is a bit of a shame. Our Marines jumping back out of the bunker. Not going to be able to catch up. We are going to build an immortal first here from Drogo. A little bit of extra safety in his army. Just buffers it up that little bit. Four more gates, and there is indeed, like you just said, the Templar Archives really just matches up well with this style. Yeah, exactly. So, third command center is coming up for Spirit. Generally, we don't really see Terrans going into Ghosts until they have about three command centers taken. So, obviously, that's the... Natural enemy, I guess, is what we can say of the Archon. So Archons are going to be very strong for the time being. The problem is, of course, when Terran doesn't have the third base landed yet, where exactly do you engage, right? It's not like you can just, well, charge up the... Well, you could technically charge up the ramp if you really wanted to of the natural expansion, but probably not a great choice. Spirit right now, though, thinking about going for a bit of a move out himself, mostly just pushing back those Stalkers for the time being. It's a little bit risky. This is where having built the Immortal feels great. And the second one on the way too, because if that can help mm -hmm. get in range of the couple of tanks, that would be amazing. This Raven does not have Matrix. There's not been an upgrade for Matrix in this game. So this Raven can only do two things, auto turret or go for the anti armor missile. He's just going to lead with a bunch of auto turrets, tank up some Zealots. Tanks will now get Siege. They're going to target fire the Stalker specifically, but I honestly think the Zealots are going to do a great job. And there's that Immortal just going to chunk away at those mm -hmm. Siege tanks. Very comfortable defense from Drogo here. And just doesn't need to go chasing down like this. I think this is actually the worst thing he's done because now he loses a bunch of units while not gaining anything. Yeah, a little bit of a overextension there. He could have just sat back on his battery. Realistically, Spirit couldn't have done more. He wanted more, but he really got nothing out of that chase. Yeah, that one Immortal there really helping out. Now Drogo is going to go into the fourth base as well. There's the Ghost Academy in the meantime on the other side of the map, but it might be kind of tricky here for Spirit to actually secure that third base if Drogo does decide to get aggressive here in just a moment. And there certainly is an opportunity for him to go ahead and do so. A couple of medivacs right now on the right side of the map as well, trying to see if maybe they can get some damage done, while at the same time, there's also two medivacs, well, soon to be unloading inside of the main base. Widow Mines are in there too. Is Drogo going to be able to clean up both at the same time? Widow Mine not burrowed yet, so these probes do manage to slitter away, I guess, but that's still seven of them going down. Eight gateways getting shut down and the forge off of two pylons. That is a massive catch here from Spirit. He's going to shut down at least, what, two cycles of warpins perhaps? So Drogo's going to start floating some money and this means that as Spirit continues to be aggressive, Drogo is likely going to have a bunch of issues. He will start to clean this attack up in the main base. Well, he should be able to, but he's actually lost a couple stalkers so far. In the end, Spirit actually lifts up, gets out of there. He's about to cancel a fourth base as well, just a w single drop of units, but <laughs> it's been enough. Drogo does pay attention, does cancel, but what a great few moments here from Spirit as we do use even the prism to repower the gates a couple moments sooner just to speed things along and to try and cancel out on some of the warp he was potentially about to lose. Yeah, Drogo doing an amazing job in the first, I want to say, six minutes or so of this game. And, well, it only takes one of those moments, though, for everything to go awry. At this point, Spirit is suddenly finding himself at a massive supply lead. He managed to get the cancel as well on that opponent's fourth base. And now suddenly it's three base versus three base. The damage is not even just done yet. Uh, now we won't have enough energy here either for any sort of storming or anything like that. So what exactly do you do right now as Drogo? Yeah, I guess you just re-expend, but... Now, of course, Spirit is thinking about going across the map again as well. He's got a very scary army. Now the ghosts are added into the mix as well, which are going to be absolutely fantastic, assuming you control it well. I kind of like Drogo's choice. This is choice. A, a tricky one. I kind of like Drogo's choice of just attacking, though, because he says, well, you know what? Yeah. This has all gone wrong, but I did kill a fair few units during this. Like, maybe not quickly or efficiently, but I killed some units, so maybe if he messed up his macro, maybe I can catch him without enough stuff. In this case, I don't think that's true. The Sim City is there. There's a bunker, mines, ghosts. I think Spirit's going to be absolutely fine if Drogo attacks in. I don't hate the idea of attacking. I don't hate the idea of even if he just checks, sees it's not going to happen, and backs off. Putting himself in this position to take advantage if the moment was there is really not a bad idea. 
And the question is, should he be committing though? Because there's a lot of Widow Mines. I was going to say, pushing into that choke point with the auto turrets down, definitely not what you're looking for. In the meantime, we do have one Widow Mine as well over at the fourth base of the Protoss player, just putting in a little bit of work, just denying the mining there. Uh, this is a literal minefield. I don't think Drogo can go. He's thinking about it though. Oh, that prism. Yeah, prism is going to get out. We oh. do lose the prism now. One storm goes off. It's taking so long to bust through the bunker on the top side that I feel like Drogo's is going to get so stuck on that. He warps in more Zealots. Still got EMPs available. Drogo has a slight upgrade lead here. We're getting to the point where he needs the reinforcements and the Zealots start to come through just before the tech units take fire. The Zealots start to melt quickly. Is it enough as Drogo keeps on pushing? This SCV is starting to be lost. Spirit needs his reinforcement cycles to come through and he is starting to get there. Now he gets immortal. He's got an Archon or two very quickly after. This is the problem for Drogo as he kills 25 SCVs. He's going to lose a lot of his army and now it's Spirit's turn to head straight across the map. Although <laughs> these Zealots are going to hold him up a bit longer as well. Yeah, that second prism already prepared, right? When he lost the first one with the Templar yeah. in it, he had a backup prism as well to continue warping in more and more units. Maybe catching Spirit off guard a little bit as well, that Immortal, oh, with that barrier ability, stayed alive for, well, at least one stutter step longer. That's 31 SCVs going down, but yeah, like you said, now it is Spirit's turn to start messing around on the other side of the map a little bit. And I wouldn't be surprised if he's going to be boxing all of his units up here very soon to go across the map. There will be defensive High Templar available. There's certainly a chance that Drogo can hold on here. And now suddenly he's finding himself with a worker lead. But this is going to be a very scary attack. Plus two infantry weapons is going to finish up as well very soon. That will definitely help out Spirit. Yeah, the upgrades are going to be good from Spirit. Obviously, like you say, the defensive high temple, and also just the fact Drogo is reliant on an army that can just warp in a ton of zealots all at once. Those things are very good right now. You know, you can basically rebuild in a moment as that observer is going to go down. So mines will be a little bit safer. Good storm to knock down one mine at the very least. You can see Spirit being very cautious about how he attacks into this. Cannons coming up defensively as well. Anything to hold Spirit off. Drogo trying to close in that army supply gap. Has the prism on the other side, so Spirit's SCVs have to evacuate the main already. Spirit does actually have a fourth base coming into play, though, so his base count is looking pretty mm -hmm. good. Yeah, he did secure that uh, 9 o'clock expansion during all of this, so that is actually quite nice for him indeed. So let's still go into town, though. There's not a lot of workers out, right? Now, obviously, Taran does have access to the mule. That will give them a nice bit of income. Second prism here ultimately ends up going down as well inside of the main base. There should now be enough, though, to properly start pushing at least some of this army back. But so many of those zealots uh, going down to the Widow Mines before they get even close to the Marines and the Marauders. Okay, we're going to go into a Colossus right now. Second Robo Facility also coming up here for Drogo. Hmm. This has been a nice and back-and-forth game, but... Ultimately, Spirit is finding himself in a much more comfortable spot here. Yeah, I mean, he's rebuilding the SCVs that he's lost, and with the 12, well, not even 12 worker difference, 10 workers or less, it's just fine. The mules will cover that for you, so he's undone the income advantage that Drogo had, and Drogo used that income advantage to rebuild an army up to the point where he can survive. But now Spirit's back on track, his army's looking great again. I do like the tech switch into Colossi. While it's a vulnerable moment for him while he gets set up into that, I like that he's getting there, because at least that's something that's not just going to insta-die to ghosts. Yeah, exactly. Now, he did just find that planetary fortress with the zealots, probably hoping that that base wasn't taken yet. So that's the moment where your heart sinks a little bit. You're like, oh, I am in a pretty good... Never mind. There's a fourth command center yeah. and a planetary fortress and a full saturation already set up. Not what you're hoping for. Spirit is going to continue to dance over here with the Medivacs. Now darting on over towards the main base. He's pushing over at the 3 o'clock position right now as well with the rest of his biological units. Trying to pull Petit Drogo in, in so many different angles all at once. Yeah, this is a... It's going to be a tricky one, right? Like now you really see it's uh, reflected here as well in the supply count. I really don't know if I like these sort of YOLO drops that much. It feels like a, an unnecessary risk here, but yeah, there's enough Terran here to push back those reinforcements. Brodo's going to jump on the Terran army on the map, at least. Widow Mines actually get to burrow up during this push forwards. So they blow up on top of the army. The drop on the main, like you mentioned, uh, again, maybe a little bit more overzealous than it needs to be. He depowers those gates again. It was still just one pylon that replaced earlier, and now actually the uh, Stalker's swarping in there slowly. This happened previously where there's that still pylon to the left, so the warping continues, mm -hmm. but it gets slowed down because they're not attached to a gateway anymore. Do you have a couple more stalkers getting picked up? And we just have, I think, at this point, Spirit doing enough because <laughs> eventually yeah. he will just go for one big attack and his army back at home is starting to look monstrous.
You know, watching a Colossus shoot at a Marauder is always an interesting moment, right? Like, it seems like, oh, it's a big machine, he should be taking... Oh, never mind. Marauder is doing quite okay, as long as there's a Medivec around to try and heal it back up. Those Marines, though, not quite so lucky. I guess they had already been roasted. But yeah, now there's a 50 supply advantage right here for Spirit. He is maybe a little bit a little bit slow on the plus two armor. Maybe the, the, the plus three infantry weapons already could have been started, too, if I am being very critical. But ultimately... Ultimately, he's finding himself at a massive advantage right now, and yeah, maybe a disruptor hit, right, can allow you back into this game, but playing it straight up is going to be very tricky here for Drogo. I mean, he's going to start having a maxed out Spirit pushing him. Spirit knows he doesn't need to sit back once it's maxed. He can start pushing, he can start trading. He's still got the total couple of drops just being annoying in the main, and that's going to force Drogo to split up a bit, which is not really what his army size allows him to do easily. So Spirit just wanders over. This base is absolutely done for. And there's 16 probes here. So I wonder if, you know, Drogo feels like he has to fight. And clearly he does. Because he just moves mm -hmm. forward. That's not going to end well. The EMPs were well placed. Soften things up straight away. And it really looks as though Spirit just keeps on marching into more and more of an advantage right now. As we see the bio going to stand and fight. If he has a few more of these zealots, this is all going to get cleaned up. 23, 24 probes going down. The bio continues to trade. And yeah, I mean, this is just... Absolutely, the Spirit game. I mean, good fight from Drogo, because I don't yep. think a lot of people coming into this with how well Spirit was playing lately would have necessarily expected Drogo to be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Spirit for so long. I think Spirit's experience definitely came through in the end and definitely had a little bit of something to say, so... GG's, he gets himself back into it, and that is going to be Spirit taking game number one. Yeah. All things considered, though, that was a very competitive game, right? When the Widowmine drop first came in, and when that one Widowmine walked up to the high ground with the Hellions and stuff, I mean, I think three Stalkers ended up going down, which is not necessarily a great trait right there for Protoss. But the thing is, especially when players are a little bit rusty, those are the sorts of attacks that we see just simply end the game. Right? You make one little mistake, you lose your entire mineral line, and then suddenly just a good old Stimpak plus one with combat shield attack just destroys Protoss. And Drogo handled that, all things considered, very nicely. Then the follow-up attacks were solid too. Yeah, he, he had some good moments there, but ultimately Spirit was just a little bit better with all of the traits and all of the fights just went a bit better right there for Terran overall. But that was a competitive game, right? That wasn't a, a landslide victory right there for Spirit. So curious to see what we're going to see here in game number two. I, I wasn't like a landslide victory and like, uh, oh, Drogo got off to like a cheeky start and he started to take that start and like kind of try and run with it or something. Like, no, it was like a fairly straight up game and Drogo found his moment and he took a very good fight yeah. on that third base. He killed off like 30 SCVs or so. So did a fantastic the job of that. double prism. It was kind of cute. Yeah, no, it was, it was a very cool game from Drogo. So, you know, what's exciting for me is even if Drogo loses here, he's got more chances. And obviously, again, the deeper that Swiss goes, in theory, the more fair the matches become, right? 1 and 0s play 1 and 0s, 0 and 1s play 0 and 1s. So, I, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I really. Um... <laughs> Sorry, just reading what Drogo was saying there in the lobby. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I really just felt as though, like, you know, that gets me excited for Drogo and the rest of the event. As Drogo says, I thought I threw it, but then I checked the replay and I was behind 30 supply when I attacked and I almost killed you. Hashtag Protoss patch. So yeah, he, he thought he was obviously in like a really good spot and then mm -hmm. didn't actually do it when actually he was in a pretty bad spot and he did better than we expected. So funny to see how the point of views change from us being able to see everything and then Drogo not obviously being able to see quite as much. Yeah, and I think a little bit later on into the game, he was then also caught off guard a little bit by the Planetary Fortress because he sent two Zealots towards the left side that he found a fully saturated base. Yeah, exactly. Maybe a small little misery right there for Drogo, but he played well. He did indeed, and speaking of him, he is in the top right-hand corner of the map. In the red, it is Petit Drogo. And his opponent, down here in the bottom left-hand corner, we have Spirit. Playing a very solid game, number one, even though we are hyping up his opponent quite a bit. I think most people yeah, would be assuming that uh, Spirit is the favorite going into this one. Spirit has just been performing so well as of late. He's just yeah, looking like one of the very best Terrans. And... Drogo, we haven't seen a lot of his games, and usually that would mean that players are a little bit rusty, but yeah, competitive game. No, nope, absolutely loved it. Uh, like I say, really just gets me excited for Drogo. Obviously in game two, see what he does, but just really for the future, because like I say, the rest of the matches he will play in this event now, I might have gone yeah. and been like, well, maybe I expect Drogo to be one of the first to drop from this tournament, right? To maybe go 0-3, because he hasn't seen him that much. He hasn't in our eyes been playing a lot. But then you show up and you go, like I say, a bit of a fight with Spirit, 
And now I'm like, yeah, maybe Droga can maybe maybe playoffs is a bit of a stretch too far, but maybe he can still make it to the final play day. Maybe he will have a chance to play into the playoffs at least. So yeah, very excited yeah, to see that. Absolutely. Yeah, so the other good players in this group, well, there's a couple of names, like for example, Sero and Raynor. I heard they they are pretty good as well. But They're all right, yeah. After that, I would say Hero Marine is really strong, of course, Elaser too, but I think he definitely has a shot. I mean, obviously it depends on who he's gonna be facing next and how everybody else performs, but the players that are yeah, remaining in this group, I mean Spirit is definitely one of the one of the main competitors, I would say, right here in group A. So, considering he will, if he loses this series, right, he would go up against somebody who's also 0-1. Um, he would probably face somebody who's going to be, well, a little bit weaker than Spirit overall. Yep, absolutely. Unless you get a load of upsets like we had last season. Last season we were, yeah. like, painting this, like, whole, like, analogy and how it works. Then there was a couple of upsets day one. It's like, uh... Like, some of the own ones were playing max packs or something. I was like, what? Well, I don't think it was max packs. I think it was, like, Showtime. You know, like, own one playing against Showtime. It's like, that doesn't feel great, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. Anyways, we do have our probe. Just moving up, having a scout around. We do see the SCV of Spirit is going to come across the map. Factory is obviously just about to be done on Spirit's side as well. So, just going to get that completed up here. And he is looking to proxy the Starport, which can be obviously pretty good for a cheeky mm -hmm. little Hellion drop or so. And something like we, I always think of as the Clem build nowadays, because he probably does it the most and he does it extremely well. It seems like Spirit has similar intentions here. It's going to once again be Blink as well from Drogo, and there indeed does go that Starport on the other side of the map. We are starting to pump out those Hellions as well, so obviously the Medivac is going to spawn a little bit closer to the side of the Protoss. The Hellions will drive on over there and then get dropped off inside of the main base, and it's another one of those crisis moments, right? It's so easy to mess it up. We saw this exact same uh, exchange in game number one with the SCV popping into the command center right there and then getting out on the safe side of that building once again. Either way, yeah, it's going to be a moment where Drogo has to be on point, right? He has to be on point with his defense, and losing an Adept is not really how you want to start that. Nope. That goes down pretty much straight away, so not ideal. And I got a Medivac and a couple of Hellions keep on producing through. Like I say, I'm just going to wait for all these Hellions to get across the map. The idea of the Proxy Starport is the Medivac takes the longest to build, so as the Medivac pops, the Hellions are waiting there for pickup, and then they can go. And it's a pretty big main base, there's a lot of edges that are not seen, and if you get all four Hellions unloaded early, and they just run straight into the mineral line, that could mean big, big trouble here for Drogo. Absolutely. Yeah, so the Hellions now unscouted on the other side of the map. The Adept ended up going down, so nothing's really allowing a whole lot of vision. Now the Starport is going to fly back home, and how much damage can these Hellions deal? So, Stalkers are being warped in. Oh, we kind of okay. dipped around kind of a little bit there. Little bit. Yeah. Okay, now we move through, but I mean, now these probes haven't been pulled, we're just gonna stand and fight. The Hellions can micro in the medivac as well. I feel like <laughs> Spirit, he's microing to keep the Hellions alive, but then they're staying in the medivac almost too long. Seven probes, yeah. eight. We should get one more. Oh, I regen the shield. Wow, very nice. <laughs> okay, well, still nice. Eight probes is good. Not disaster levels from Drogo, but still gonna put him behind by five workers, which when the Terran has mules, is not ideal. Yep, and this is once again a follow-up right here with that third Nexus, so not sort of uh, like a two-base all-in with like four gateways or whatever. Like none of that is going on right here for Drogo. He is going to be forced to tiptoe his way back into that worker count. And it's one of those small little mountains right now that he will have to climb. It's difficult for him to get a lot of damage done. Maybe he can get the starport to burn, but I don't think he should be able to pick that off. I mean, there's a siege tank out. Marines are going to start marching. Getting the starport would be neat, I suppose, but nah, it's not going to happen. Tangle Siege, these few Marines are going to sit there. Stalkers will continue through One Marine goes down. And we just have ourselves the barracks. Going to start up a stim pack upgrade. So gets that started straight away. And yeah, the few Stalkers just pinging, poking, prodding. Having a good time of it up until now as that charge starts up on the Twilight Council. Yep. Once again, going into that charge research. So Drogo more than happy, though, to play the macro game, which is also nice to see. It's going to start uh, loading those Stalkers into the prism to maybe see if he can get some damage done inside of the main base. But there's a Siege Tank in the natural. There's a Siege Tank in the main base. The units here from the Terran have been split up nicely. That includes the Marines as well. And, well, they're going to be able to start working on this pretty easily. Oftentimes, yep. we have players like Maxpec doing these sort of builds, and then they still get, you know, like six workers, and you're like, wait, what? <laughs> How do you just kill six SCVs here? Not going quite as smoothly, sadly, here for Drogo. That's the magic of Maxpec, and it's really the threat he creates elsewhere to then make the drop so much more powerful. Yeah. Uh, and as you can see, like, Spirit's pretty well set up. Like, the tanks are in the right place to cover a lot of the space, 
and Drogo's just not really prepped for that level of preparation, which a lot of these top Terrans absolutely have on, lock and, you know, on lockdown nowadays because, quite frankly, if you're not doing that, you die to max packs every single game on the ladder. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Max packs uh, unintentionally making this game much harder for Drogo because you need <laughs> to be so on point with splitting up your maybe, units. Maybe max packs is the reason all the other pro players are struggling, man. He's made all the other Terrans so, <laughs> made all the Terrans so good in TVP. <laughs> Yeah, here comes a push from Spirit. Yeah, no, there's definitely a chance. Just uh, getting more value out of your most basic units. It sounds so obvious, right? But <laughs> turns out in practice, it's not nearly as easily done. Anyways, he's going to be marching across the map, Spirit, right now. He's got himself that Stimpak upgrade, Combat Shields, and plus one infantry are lined up nicely. You will see those upgrades finishing on the right side of your screens. There we go. So they're just 10 seconds away, and that is going to be a very scary Terran army. Siege tanks are inching closer right now. The battery overcharge, I mean, should be nice, but those Marauders are going to be able to close the distance. Uh, they're like, hello, thanks so much for the battery. Take that down straight away. Sentry goes down, a couple of Zealots taking shots. Marines will come through, we're going to dive forward. The battery goes down, a few more Zealots drop, and this is just a scenario where Drogo obviously just lost yep. a lot, didn't really do much. And this is the power of Spirit, where if things do not go well for you initially, he is not going to let you have a good time. Archons are dropping very quickly, which is never a good sign. Just about saves one of them, but it's about a touch away from dropping. And obviously, if Spirit just moved his tanks up a little bit, he would be golden. He did lose 9 SCVs during this, but when you have 40 army supply ahead and in position on the other side of the map, I kind of feel like it's going to be all right. Yeah. Oh, he decides to... Okay, I was going to say, that's very ambitious. He decided to build the Nexus there for just a split second and then instantly cancelled it. Effectively, I guess, losing the minerals that could have been spent on a Zealot. And Drogo really needs any unit he can get right now. That's another Zealot getting picked off for free. Now dragging the rest of that Proto's army within the Siege Tank range. This is going from bad to worse right now for Drogo, right? He's trying to secure another base. Maybe the Zealot run by in the main base, or I guess flyby can somehow, some way, kill the entire mineral line and then some. But it's going to be very difficult for him to get that much done, because... All of the reinforcing Terran units are probably sitting at home. There they are. Yep, just going to be able to deal with that prism, and obviously Spirit just happy to keep on poking away at this base because there's a couple gates to grab here. Um, obviously as well, I feel like Spirit hasn't really reinforced in a while. He's kept his units at home. As Drogo no. just flank around and jump on the risky. tanks. So that's at least kind of nice, and this is only going to be closed because Spirit hasn't really reinforced. If he just lifts up, falls back to reinforcements and pushes with everything, this shouldn't really be a contest again, and very much so should just still be Spirit able to somewhat A-move on the other side of the map. No, absolutely. Spirit just sitting at home for a really long time. Maybe we're respecting that prism a bit too much. Once again, the max specs effect coming in. <laughs> you never know exactly when that unit is going to unload a bunch more Zealots and destroy all of your SCVs. Anyways, now he's trying, okay, he's trying to set up a, uh, a command center over here at the third base location. Finally, a little bit of counter damage will be done right here by Drogo. He did some as well in the main base, I believe, but yeah. ultimately he needs to clean up this Terran army, and I just don't see the units for it. That, that's the issue. Uh, what he's doing is actually okay across the map. He got a few SCVs before this as well, and now he actually gets eight more. But this is what, you know, you can do as Spirit is actually good SCV. Hold position micro on the other side is going to let those Zelts get cleaned up now. Spirit's going to get just as much damage, killing off the third base, and that is indeed going to be GG, rounding that out and closing this up. 